As I like to say, one man, a laptop, a phone, and the truth. Shout out to JNK having his coffee. Artist Journal, October 8th, 2022, Berlin. Your artist reporter here, reporting for duty in a community of artists, Bazaya retweeted this one. A uh, really interesting work by someone called Zero, an AI work based on a Thomas Gainsborough. I just, it just kept on working its way up the chain as I was kind of putting the show together. And all of a sudden, it's on the cover, and the cover is very important. Uh, at least, like, you know, Stan Lee, for those who are comic aficionados, of course, you know who, former publisher of Marvel Comics and editor in chief in the 1960s. Uh, before he gave the reins to the guy who took over Amazing Spider-Man, those first hundred issues of Amazing Spider-Man, by the way, are a masterpiece uh, of just like, it's a great novel. So when I consider the first hundred issues of Amazing Spider-Man to be one of the great novels of the 20th century, I would go so far as to say, and John Romita, my God, and Steve Dicko. Anyways, don't let me get into that, but I highly recommend you read that. But Stan Lee, in an interview in maybe the 70s or 80s, was talking about the you know Silver Age of comics and the heyday of Marvel in the 1960s, and he said it was all about the cover. What sold the comics, it was 100% about the cover and how exciting and colorful and great that cover was. So that is fascinating, you know? And here it's, in a sense, our business here say, especially on object, you know, these 10 cent comics, you know, a lot of people selling for one or two Tezos. It's kind of like a similar mentality. It's, it's, it's all about the cover or your work here and how kind of exciting it is. And if people just want to take it off the stand, it's very similar, very surprisingly similar. Anyway, I could go on and on. So this is called Gainsbro again by a newer artist called Zero. I believe this person is newer. I was having internet issues here. We'll see if it's back. I connected to my phone, if you can believe that. So let's see. I may save the day here. Yeah. Okay. So zero. Actually, not a newer artist. My mistake. A couple of pages of work. But also, you see this AI work. I think I brought it up. Uh, let's just see. So another AI work. Stable diffusion. Okay. I, I have some show notes I want to get through. But let's just quickly look. So just wrap up with uh, zero here. So Gainsbro. This is inspired by Thomas Gainsborough, and if you look, this is a famous work by Thomas Gainsborough, who is an English artist, uh, and this is, you know, one of the most famous works. You'll see it at the National Gallery here, 1748 to 1749, so 18th century, a fascinating century. Uh, some people, I mean, every one of these centuries, the experts in it want to call you, say that it's like the real start of the modern world. Renaissance people will say the same thing. And even medieval people will say, say the same thing. Uh, so anyways, yeah, William Hogarth. Anyways, very famous uh, painter, English painter. Uh, so in this work, uh, Zero is playing off Gainsborough Landscapes. And I think, you know, these are the kind of things you see in antique stores like that are you get a copy of it printed on to a canvas and then you'll get Banksy 200 years later will be doodling on top of that. Uh, and finally on this, just there's a mystery face here. Second mint from my collection, Peridolia. Nothing is more magical than the changing of leaves. So I assume that they just did this one tree a different color and it's just a striking work can you spot the nothing man face i assume it's the two eyes here are the sky and the mouth is the river but you tell me i mean generally you guys are better at this stuff than i am uh, but that's my stab at that uh, my take on the face there uh continuing on so just some show notes here uh uc zine uh, chimed in. So those that want to pick up this totally awesome JPEG dealer work, Caught Dealing JPEGs, which we were looking at, I believe, yesterday, it feels like so long ago, uh, what you have to do is you have to pick up this work here. Nothing is permanent. And here is that work. You got to buy five of these for two Tezos each, still available. Not that many left when you consider five each, 110 left. Uh, and then you will be, then you have to burn it. 
See if the internet works here. It is working. So you see what people are doing? They are burning or they are buying and burning this work so that they get caught dealing JPEGs. That's super cool work by UC Zine that we were looking at yesterday. So that's how you do it. Okay, I was waiting for it to go on sale, right? So thank you for uh, chiming in, UC Zine. Isn't it great that this community is small enough where the artists are like, you know, writing in? Uh, so that's totally awesome. We're tweeting in. Uh, look at this work also by UC Zine that was put out a couple of days ago. Just an awesome, awesome cloud work. I assume it's a cloud, just pixelated cloud work. So just more fabulous work from UC Zine. Really cool artist. Uh, shout out to JNK. Uh, great episode as always. Love the quote rebirth of the single thing. That's what's up. So this idea might have legs. Okay. Which is just a whole other topic, which is super interesting. Talking about NFT music players, please check the dev work of no fungible NFT. He's building crazy music tools for the Tezos ecosystem. So just a big FYI to everyone. Uh, no fungible NFT is building some crazy music tools, so I'll have to follow up on that. Um, a new idea from RuneTune, which was very interesting. Again, we went into depth two or three episodes ago on what RuneTune was saying about uh, he was comparing abstract expressionism to AI. Now he brought up a super interesting point here. It's my understanding that the reason we see such a strong stylistic relationship with surrealism in AI art is because the tools themselves excel at producing surreal images. And it's not so much that the artists using AI are deliberately making surreal work. I think this is a profound, uh, a profound uh, insight. I, to I agree with you. Like, I don't think this is like the classic, you know, quote unquote, classic surrealists of the 1920s and 30s and 40s who are being inspired by, you know, Sigmund Freud and the interpretation of dreams and maybe a few other people and then going in and making art, right? This is, it's more the tool itself is a surrealist art generator is another way of looking at it. We called it a chance machine. You know, you put in some variables, you have no idea what's going to come out. It is kind of reminiscent a little bit of the cut-up method by William Burroughs and Brian Geisen in The Third Mind, which we'll have to get into, but very quickly on that, I mean, they would take a newspaper and they'd fold it up, and taking choosing the newspaper article is the equivalent of the prompt in my little analogy here. So it's not total randomness, because it's not like you're just saying, give me anything. You're giving a prompt, and it's like the equivalent of choosing, let's do this news article, and then fold it up, and then we have our cut-up method. So anyways, just more kind of, I think this is a really profound insight. These are, I would say, another way of putting it is these are AI artists first, surrealists second, you know, if at all. Uh, but I do love the term AI surrealism, and it sounds like RuneTune has, is coming around to this idea that the closest stylistic genre to AI is surrealism. And I think once I, I agree with that, I think he agrees and just everybody. So I think this is a profound insight, though, that it's the tools themselves that are creating the surrealism rather than the artists coming in after having read, you know, the interpretation of dreams by Sigmund Freud, as many of the quote unquote classic surrealists did, you know, um, or Lothriamon, on and on, right? A quick note on this AIAD exhibition. So we actually know what it stands for now. So I knew it was an artificial intelligence exhibition. AIAD is a digital art exhibition focusing on and celebrating AI art taking place at Tears in Rain Gallery in Voxels, October 6th to 20th, 2022, in partnership with Object.com and Future Art who I will give a follow to, AIAD stands for Artificial Intelligence Analog to Digital. Okay, so that is going on. Uh, so just a little more info there. I thought this was hilarious and kind of exciting too at the same time. Minta put out a work on this web server is returning an unknown error, which I commented on yesterday. When we're not having internet problems, object is having problems. What I really kind of got excited about with this though it's kind of funny and it's commentary and it's classic kind of meta minta work. But what I really got excited about was the quick turnaround 
And I'm kind of back to this news artist idea where all of a sudden that this idea that artists can give real time responses to the news, because what I'm seeing here is a very quick turnaround with commentary, like within a day, within hours. And so this, you know, news artist concept, which I have been exploring in the Secret History of World War Three series, barely touched on with what I've published on object, but to me, that's what really kind of gets me excited is this very quick turnaround. Uh, Nicholas Sassoon, an early supporter of this program, I believe, if I remember right, I'm pretty sure, uh, has a new collection. Either way, has a cool new collection on Manifold.xyz. I think Nicholas Sassoon is on Super Rare and is on Tezos, so just all around and now putting out a collection on Manifold, and it's pretty reasonably priced at 0.05 ETH. And here it is. So time limited edition minted with Manifold released in partnership with Dalbin Paris. So that sounds really cool. And this was just an interesting work in progress. We have a few work in progresses this episode. Uh, this is by Degeha. I think I'm pronouncing that right. So this is going to be put out on foundation and look at this, like this DJ, this looks like, I would guess it's like an Indonesian thing. Uh, the iconography. It looks Eastern. Anyways, DJ almost, yeah, just really, really interesting, cool work there. Uh, Gabby Walters' work in progress as well. I thought we'd just touch on this because we've looked at Gabby Walters before. Remember the Mona Lisa uh, Mickey Mouse painting that was being sold through the object marketplace, uh, basically selling a physical work using this marketplace, which I think is, I could see that happening more. And it sold, by the way, it sold. Okay, so that's just an interesting idea. Anyways, a work in progress from Gabby. So cool. Always great to see this. And Diego, new art coming, Diego Bayro. And he's got a nice palm tree thing going. It looks like he is in Procreate here. So just kind of fun to watch people working in progress. Continuing on, and finally, this is by Greco. My Head is Going to Burn, Psychiatric Scenes is the name of the series, and so there are still a few left here. And you see, it's a very interesting work, digital painting, you see these, yeah, so it's a little bit of a psychotic work in a sense. Uh, you see these guys who are screaming at the end of cigarette cigarettes, you see the burning car and the horse head and the Lacoste shirt, classic, and almost in a diner or something. So pretty reasonably priced at eight Tezos, if you ask me. Digital painting, thought of a rainy day and finished today, a rainy day too. So very cool work from Greco. Limbo is a guy who I discovered from JNK's collection. And that is one of the great things about digital art collecting is you get to look at everybody else's collection. And I think that's actually one of the most revolutionary things about digital art collecting is this idea of being able to look at other people's collections. And we'll come back to this limbo work, but let me just show you something. So let's say this is a work that you profoundly love and you're excited about. Well, you can just go to the owners and then you can start seeing everybody who, who also liked it. And then you can start going through all their feed. And I think I brought this up here. So then you click on Kurt Hustle Collective's uh, you know, feed, you click on that, it brings you here, and then you see everything else that KHC is collecting. He's buying a ton of myth, interestingly, um, smartly, probably. One Bit Necro is another guy who I discovered from JNK's feed. We'll touch on One Bit Necro in a future episode. We have to, but you see what I mean. You, you come here and you start discovering other artists. Compare that to the contemporary art world. How do you look at other people's collection unless they have a museum like Saatchi and is putting a fraction of the works on display? How do you even know it? So the discovery process is revolutionary in digital art. This is a, it's a profound point that we often kind of glaze over or just kind of, it's almost assumed because we all know that, but it's actually profound in its implications. The discovery process is faster and more thorough, comprehensive. Uh, so very cool work by Limbo here. Let me just make sure. Emperor of Grief in a Forbidden Land. Kind of got a little bit of an anime feel and it's got an animation feel. See the Japanese, really nice. I, I assume that's Japanese letters, maybe Korean. I'm not an expert on that. It looks, I would guess Japanese. 
some nice mushrooms in the background and just kind of an interesting kind of illustration. So just kind of like a crazy sci-fi work uh, from Limbo. And you can see some, He's. I think Limbo has been around for a while and I think it's a he. And you see just like, again, it's got this anime kind of comic art thing going. Illustrator, sequential artist, exploring parallel universes. And yeah, I mean, just really cool kind of, I guess kind of surreal. Limbo Universe Collection. This is October 22nd, 2021. And that's not even like their oldest work. They've been around for a while, October 5th, 2021. So anyways, interesting artist, just kind of a unique artist, a new monster from Daniel W. And these are just fun because they're kind of educational as well as just beautiful works. We're looking at Daniel W. I think yesterday or the day before. So this is a new monster in the weird and terrifying or a new villain. This time features the nasty Gulyabani from Turkey. So... I might have to start collecting this series. You see Daniel W's signature down here. It's cheap. It's 2.3 Tezos per episode, 32 editions. And another work, so a lot of new artists. I mean, we have actually touched Yuri before. I thought this was a nice new work by Yuri JJJJ. Yuri uses a lot of patterns and just a lot of I'm tempted to call like digitalia or just digital elements to create these kind of semi abstracted interiors oftentimes sweet rose so just a small edition number edition of five and you can get for 20 and this was one that I picked up I think I mentioned this one in the summer July 22nd 2022 so just, again, these kind of interesting semi-abstract interiors that kind of play with space. Again, I, I was tempted to call it, it's almost like semi-cubist and how it just approaches space. A new work by Kappa, Kappa Sage, Free Tezos. And you see there looks to be another reference to cause here in these kind of Mickey Mouse figures. So interesting. Is that a Swiss flag? I should know that. And again, we've got a, I, I missed this before. So like a barrel oil can with a fire. So just more mayhem. Vanguard from Kappa. Looks like he's using Autodesk a little bit. That's interesting. Cause. So there's cause. So just kind of interesting. This was an interesting artist as well. Uh, who retweeted this? Morlakos. Merlacos retweeted this one. This is a one of one available for 10. I just thought it was like, I agree, Merlacos. This is kind of just an interesting, good looking work. Reminds me of those medieval times guys that are in the park that dress up in medieval costumes. It kind of looks like a painting of those guys, a digital work of those guys. So fighting times, one of one for 10 Tezos. And is this the same artist? Let me look, no. And then we have actually Mikey de la Creme found this work. And then we'll go back to that other work. So another new artist discovered by Mikey de la Creme. So you guys are making it easy for me here. I just go on Twitter and go, oh, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, they're doing all the hard work. I actually saw Mikey de la Creme in a meeting yesterday. Uh, but anyways, uh, so shout out to him. Good to meet him in the flesh. Uh, in person over video, I guess. Um, they got some great projects coming up with Arthropo, and I am helping out with a little consultation. Um, so anyways, just an interesting uh, work. Uh, you know, not much more to say about it, just using like this uh, mosaic technique at the bottom, combining just a lot of different, you know, then digital brush strokes here, uh, mixing brush to the pieces. And this is called graffiti. And let's actually quickly, should our internet work? And yeah, I think Mikey, see, so it's mixing different kind of digital styles. So again, just trying to always inject new blood into what we're looking at here, because there's constant talent out there. And today I hope to bring in a lot of it. This was a really interesting work. Who retweeted, Polly Jojo sent me this work. Uh, it's super cheap and it's not actually that high of an addition. All right. So 
so a little edgy at the end there, but I mean, kind of has, again, like contemporary art museum or gallery written all over it, in my opinion. Buy for 0.2 Tezo cents. Polly Jojo sent that over. Um, so just kind of interesting. I picked one up. Uh, and the artist, actually, let's just go to the artist's page here. So it has all sorts of weird stuff. Uh, so I haven't really looked at their work. Again, 0.2 for 25. So kind of an interesting find from Polly Jojo. Uh, and yeah, so several pages here. It looks like uh, FX Hash Project 2. Ellie Lowe is the artist. Ellie Lowe. And they are on Twitter as well. 2D, 3D artist, monster creator. Uh, this is by Emilio.jp, these works. And I saw this on Twitter. I took some raster notes with Pixel CAD. Next week, more. Have a great weekend. So it's interesting. These look like they're on Notepad, these images. I mean, kind of screams that text. Uh, is it text.art or what is that? Tez text? I put out a few works on there, uh, but this stuff looks like it would go really well on that platform. So anyways, just some interesting work. You'll remember Emilio.jp, who again, looks very nice pixel work here on Versum. Uh, still available for relatively cheap here at five Tezos, uh, editions of 20, these recent ones. You'll remember Emilio.jp from this work that he collaborated with, with Francoise Gamma which I really like. This turned out to be an edition of 30 uh, for 10, so you can still get it. Again, this kind of, you could also put this up. You know, you put this up, you put that uh, checkout work that we just looked at, that person at the cash checkout at the grocery store. Uh, you start having a pretty serious looking show. And that's just a couple of works that we're coming across. I mean, we saw this the other day, but anyways, this was a collaboration with Emilio.jp. Uh, here's a work by Francoise Gamma that came out, just kind of a new mysterious work. Let's see if it loads up. Um, okay, here we go. So just simple, no volume, just a simple work by Francoise Gamma as we cruise through the digital landscape here, as we cruise through this show, which is awesome. I thought this was just kind of interesting because a lot of people love mech.txt as well as myself, just a great pixel artist. So you can see here he's revealing, Michael Micasso is revealing, working on a piece for practice before continuing on my world building collection. What are you planning to do this weekend? Um, so you can see he's using, I think it's Aspirite is how you pronounce it. I brought it up here. Uh, for those that are wondering, uh, this is kind of a major pixel art tool here. And I think you can download it for free and maybe you have to give like 30 or 40 bucks uh, if you want like the extra good version. I'm not sure if you do need to pay that though. A-S-E-P-R-I-T-E, -E, Aspirite, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, if you remember Gogolitis from a previous episode, he uses Aspirite, I believe, because uh, he was tweeting also works in progress. It's a very popular pixel art tool. So FYI, uh, and this is what it turned into, Got to rest up a bit, so he put a ton of work into it. So just very, very interesting. I poured everything. It wasn't supposed to be this serious, so interesting. Here is a pixel art artist that I feel like is using AI, which is just another interesting development idea. As we have our kind of daily coffee here, we have something new to talk about almost every day here. And look at this, like it doesn't say AI, but to me, what this looks like is pixel art done by AI. Now that's just interesting too, right? Because this person, Mr. Bizold, has a ton of work, different variations of pixel art. And again, you look here, this almost looks like a Chuck Close, you know, cause he was doing kind of works in this spirit uh, Shall we look at Chuck Close really quickly? Should my internet permit it? Chuck Close, should we just call it pixel portraits? There you go. I mean, it almost looks like these Chuck Close works. He has actually more pixelated works that are kind of like, yeah. Yeah, okay, so this is 
artist of monumental pixelated portraits, says Art Review. So anyways, just kind of reminiscent here, a little bit of Chuck Close in some of these, especially that one. So again, and some of them are pretty nice, but you see that, I guess what I'm getting at here is you see they're not perfect pixels. These are not perfect pixels, which makes it kind of interesting, right? And aesthetically, I'm sort of on the fence, as maybe you are, maybe not, but conceptually, I'm very, very interested. I'm very interested in what's going on here, and they're, very, they're available for very cheap. One Tezos edition of 15, you know, none have sold. So I don't remember who I, how I came across this. Maybe it's on Twitter, but very interesting. Uh, so anyways, continuing on. Now, we looked at what is IANA before. What is IANA has a new AI and digital painting work uh, in that series, and I think just another super attractive work. You can see the digital art uh, painting on top here. I love the contrast. So I'm a big fan. I picked this up. Only two Tezos, edition of 10. What are you looking for? AI and digital painting. So the next one in this series, there's only two out. So it's looking good, if you ask me. Uh, it's both still available, you know, so nice work from What is Iana. Uh, strange Thing put out this work, and I thought this was really interesting because look at all the work that this would require without AI. And this seems to be like one of those, gosh, what is the name? Like almost like a Baroque, is it Rococo? You know, like 16th or 17th century. Sometimes you see them on the ceilings of churches, the dome, you'll see it all around. And then this will be in the middle. So it seems to be one of those works, but you see how many, just an insane amount of bodies here. Thanks to AI, uh, another back catalog piece, experimenting with the re Renaissance religious state of mind and how brands have become like a religion for some in our time. This is called consumerism. Um, striving to be able to wear the best of the best, reaching for heaven. So yeah, so you see, the is this Yves Saint Laurent? <laughs> what was the other one? Louis Vuitton that I couldn't get. Maybe this is Louis Vuitton, LV. That Maybe that's what, yeah, because there's no, this is probably Louis Vuitton. Anyways, that's hilarious. So uh, just a really interesting work from Strange Thing, as usual. Uh, some Ethereum work, more Ethereum work from Varya. So a few one of ones available on foundation. So we'll have to check in at some point just to see how these are doing. Very good at the, uh, Varya is very good at the AI art. So she's, so she's putting out some one of ones. This is, these are beautiful by Javier Tomeo, Amethyst Pond. I mean, it kind of has that 18th century woodcut feeling to it. Very, very, very nice. I love the colors, like the yellow and the pink and the greens on this black. Like this black frame even really adds to the piece, in my opinion, just really good looking work. Um, here is another one by Javier called Waterfall. So you can see this waterfall in the background. And again, these botanical kind of, looks like they're inspired by botanical illustrations from the 18th century, if I had to put a wager on it. Waterfall, so nice work by Javier. This is by a guy called Filippo Filtro, brought to us by Ermac Chiani. This just had a little bit of a Lord of the Rings kind of feel to it. And Filippo chimed in. Thanks so much for posting this. I appreciate your support for 0.03 ETH. And then you see another work here. So again, just kind of looks like AI to me. Uh, I don't know if this is AI. This is by Filippo Filtro. It's tempting to think that, uh, but I actually don't know. This is AI. And another clue for us who are learning AI this looks like the prompt. White marble xenomorphs carved by Michelangelo. And we see a pretty nice result. This is by Stable Diffusion. So a name we see more and more uh, as we explore this AI art thing, Stable Diffusion. So we are learning here. So it's tempting to just cut and paste this and put it into like prompts and see what we, see if we get anything similar, you know? Or is this like the 50,000th iteration as Clown Vamp was saying? Like, remember Clown Vamp from, was it yesterday or the day before, talking about his incredibly elaborate process? So I go back to Clown Vamp, who's doing his, you know, visual 
you know, choose your own adventure here. And what I see here, I look at his works differently after seeing the incredibly elaborate process and the thousands of iterations that he's going through to get to these images here. So yeah, so you can follow Clown Vamp uh, if you want to follow this novel that he's doing uh, with AI. And here's mech.txt, uh, courtesy of Zero X Bench. Look at how good this looks. So just kind of interesting to see our NFTs outside of object. You know, in the so-called real world, it's looking good. It's looking very nice. That work went for sale. I'm not sure what it's going for now. And let's end on this. Kind of a lot, a lot of work in progress is today. So I am drawing 12 hours a day. Be like Merlacos. So that is what I'm going to do right now. So thank you for joining me today. Until next time, take care.